Hi everyone, welcome back to the Civ Raising Move. This is going to be the third part in the series where we look at the top stomach assembly. Hopefully we're going to be finishing it off this time pretty much. We're going to be looking at the disc that's going to go onto the front. There'll be a disc on here. And then we've got the uh, Neo Pixel ring to fit into the center, which should be a little bit more interesting than some of the other stuff we've been looking at lately. Um, if I first show you the 3D printed parts that we need to finish this, um, we've first got these two parts here. I believe they're called Disc Below or Disc Under. I can't remember the exact name of these. Um, then we've got uh, Disc X Turn. There's four of those. They're all the same part, just a quantity of four. And then we've got Disc In Turn, which has got this little pattern printer that will go into the center. And the NeoPixel ring lights will sit behind this and make that glow. So not too many 3D printed parts. I think the uh, difficult part of this is going to be getting these joints to fit together. They're kind of like uh, double dovetail joints, but they're smaller than we normally see. They look a little bit more fiddly. Um, so I think if I can get these four parts fitted together, um, and then we've got these two here, just a normal typical dovetail joint there. Once these are connected together, they connect onto the front of the uh, stomach assembly that we built up. Um, they attach on here, kind of form a, a base for the circle to attach to. And then the disc will attach to the front of that. Sit on top of it like that. Other parts I've got to show you. Um, we've got a few electronic parts here. We've got the NeoPixel ring itself. It's, it's a quite interesting. I've never seen one of these before. Um, these are by uh, Adafruit, I believe. Not sure if I've got the right one. I don't think it really matters. I think we can do whatever we want. Um, it does look a little small. Um, I, I looked at the disc that we're going to put it behind um, and was thinking that Oh, I've bought the wrong one. It looks a little bit small, but actually I think that's going to be just about right because it's going to put the the lights kind of more in the middle rather than sort of around the outside. They're going to be slightly closer to the center, so it possibly is the correct one. Um, I did also notice that if you look at the disc X turn, the radius on the inside of that seems to exactly match the NeoPixel ring. So maybe that's how it mounts perhaps it goes in there like that just sits inside that hole or that arc it will be a complete circle once it's all put together so perhaps this is the right one um but like i said i don't think it really matters you can do whatever you want there's no real instructions on the inmove website on how you install the neopixel ring there is there is a um i think it's like a blog article that talks about how you connect it up and how you control it but it doesn't really show how you install it into the 3d printed plastic parts so we're going to have to wing that a little bit and sort of make things up as we go along but i haven't seen anybody else cover the installation of the neopixel ring so maybe i'm the first person to actually show that um, other parts that we've got are a capacitor this is a thousand microfarads uh, and it's rated at 6.3 volts um, I don't think you have to fit it, but it is recommended by Adafruit to um, fit that across the power supply for the NeoPixel ring. That just helps to smooth out the uh, voltage dips and spikes as the NeoPixel ring draws sort of more and less current. As the current demand is changing, the capacitor just helps the power supply to keep up just smooths things out a bit so I think it is a good idea to fit that they did also recommend that you fit a resistor on the data line um, and they're suggesting somewhere between 300 and 500 ohms so I'm going to be fitting a 330 ohm resistor then we've actually got uh, another tiny little Arduino um, I didn't realize but once I started to research the InMove and the NeoPixel ring, I discovered that you actually need a dedicated Arduino to control this because of its precise timing requirements. Um, it doesn't work very well with an Arduino that is already controlling servos that also have their own very precise timing requirements. So a dedicated Arduino for this is 
ideal. Um, I was a little annoyed about the extra expense, but uh, these these cost uh, about five pounds in the UK, about five UK pounds. Um, I think you can actually get them a little cheaper if you shop around. I have seen them. You can get them for three for ten pounds, or three for about eleven or twelve pounds, something like that. Um, so you could probably get them as low as three or four pounds each. But I've, I paid about five pound for this, maybe slightly more. But it actually came with the USB lead, um, which I've got here. Um, I wasn't really sure exactly what USB lead we needed, so I decided to buy an Arduino that came with the lead. Um, I think this is USB. Uh, micro B or mini B I, I think it's a mini B um, we're actually going to uh, power the Arduino via this cable and we're going to be sending it its data signals from my robot lab via this uh, USB data cable um, we're not going to power the NeoPixel ring from that USB connection we're going to power this from its own dedicated 5 volt power supply I have also got here a little circuit board. I'm going to just mount everything onto this. So if I briefly show you my plan, um, I've been looking at how we could best lay things out, but I have had these on here. Um, I'm going to put the Arduino sort of hard in the top right corner. I'm going to have a um, ribbon cable coming in in the top left corner. What I've got here is this is where I'm going to bring my power in. I'm going to bring in a ground and then two different voltages. We're going to have a slightly higher voltage for our stomach servos. They're going to be six volts, maybe a little bit more than six volts. So we'll bring uh, the higher voltage in on there. And then the other connection, we're going to bring in the five volt supply for the um, NeoPixel ring. So we'll have a five volt supply and a six volt supply and the six volt one we might push that a little higher um, to try and give a little bit more power to the servos but the, the NeoPixel ring really needs 5 volts and it can't really tolerate anything else so we will bring in a separate 5 volt supply for that we will fit the um, capacitor across the ground and the 5 volt supply that will sit somewhere in there um, and then I'm going to put uh, some headers in here uh, we can connect things like our potentiometers for each of the um, two sets of servos and the actual servo leads themselves will plug onto some headers on here and then this connection here i'm actually going to use this as if i just show you the back of the stomach we've got this connection here that just connects the two servos motors together um, I'm going to lose that and we're going to take these cables in um, on these connections here I've actually put two sets of two in um, and I'm going to use one set for uh, the top stomach uh, servos and I'm going to use the other set for the mid stomach I think it's called which sits just below this assembly so I'm planning ahead a little bit um, and then we'll have enough headers here for both the top stomach and the mid stomach so that's my plan so I think the first thing to get into is trying to get this uh, external disc fitted together. So that's the first joint done. Uh, it's pretty tricky to get them to fit in there. Not 100% happy with it, but it's it's not too bad. I guess it's as good as we can get it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. I might um, long term put some filler on them and smooth them off and paint them. Um, ideally I want this part to be black I'm not sure whether to just paint it black now without really finishing it or just leave it white for the time being um, if we put a little bit of filler in the joints that might make them look a little bit better before we paint them that's the uh, the rear but we're not going to see the rear so that doesn't really matter so I'll crack on and try and get another one done so that's those two parts fit together they weren't too bad so that can now be screwed on to the front of the assembly um, it goes on like that the 
So you need to find a couple of screws to screw that on. So I found a couple of uh, brass screws. It's not really what I wanted to use, but I didn't have anything else that would fit. You need a quite a thick screw to go in there. And it needs a countersunk head because we want this completely flush for when we fit the ring on the outside. I did just uh, open up the countersinks on those a little bit. Just looking at the uh, the main ring and the NeoPixel ring that's going to go in it, and it does seem to fit. It does seem to fit as I suspected in that um, center circle there. It seems a perfect fit. This is going to go on here. You can actually get a little bit of an idea of what this is going to be like. It's going to have to be mounted from the front because you can't really get to the back. Um, and we're going to have to think carefully about how we solder the wires on. They, they almost look as if they want to be soldered onto the front as well. We have got this little area here at the top here. Um, that's got space behind it and then we've got this uh, strange kind of recess in here but down at the bottom where we've got some more connections that we can't get to the back we're gonna have to connect onto the front which is uh, a little strange but not a problem we can work around that um, I'm wondering if this sort of space that's in here is designed for the capacitor to sit in there because um, that would work. You could put the capacitor then right near the board. So I'll have a think about what we do with that. But I need to finish this ring off. I need to get the other two pieces joined onto this ring. So I've got all four parts together. They were really quite tricky. I had to um, file all the joints with a triangular needle file. Um, I did heat them up as I was pushing them together because I didn't want them to crack. I've just offered the centre disc in the into the middle here and I can see it's just a little bit too tight. So I'm just going to gently file around the edge of the this thin disc. So that's the uh, inner disc in there now. So that will screw onto there like that. It's starting to look nice. Before we do that though, we want to have a look at this NeoPixel ring. So I've got the NeoPixel ring in there and what I'm just looking at is, I'm not sure why you've got this sort of recess in here, but what I'm thinking of is using that to make space for the capacitor. So I can get the capacitor as close to the uh, ring as possible by soldering it directly onto the ring and then utilizing this little space down in here to accommodate the capacitor. I have no idea what this uh, hole is here. Maybe maybe that's where the cables are supposed to go out, but there's plenty of room up the top here for the cables to go out. So I'm not really sure what that hole is about. Um, maybe it's for a slightly smaller capacitor. Um, this isn't quite right. I'm just looking at trying to, you know, how I need to bend these legs. I've got to go to one of these two ground pins here and here. I think it might just be easier to go straight up and go to that one. Uh, but then I've got to come sort of quite hard over this way to reach the uh, the V plus pin here. So I'm just going to fiddle around with those legs a little bit more, try and get them. In the right positions. It's a little tricky to see because of the way I've done my wires but I've connected the capacitor across ground and V plus. Uh, you do have to be aware of the polarity of the capacitor. Make sure the negative lead of the capacitor is going to the ground and the positive is going to the uh, V plus. I've then got a resistor on my uh, signal in line my data in line, whatever you call that. And I've just kind of tied the uh, ribbon cable coming in onto the legs of the capacitor. It's a little tricky to see because of the way I've done it. But I've basically got my positive um, coming from over here, going down the center of my ribbon. Got the signal on the right as we're looking at it here, and then my ground 
on the left. So I probably just want to mark up which one is the ground so we know when we get to the other end. So as far as the cable routing goes, the only thing I'm going to uh, say right now is I'm going to be taking it through this gap here and then through the here and down to the back. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to route it from that point onwards, but I think our only options is to come out either this side or this side. We've got the cables in the middle here and there's nowhere else for them to come out. So I'm going to go this way. So I want to kind of position it so my capacitor fits in our space. Um, and then we just got this cable here. Okay. A little tricky to show you, but it's just going to drop down in there. And then I think I'll just screw this on. I would like to try things before we actually screw it together, but I, I just don't want things falling off, so I'm just going to... I could just put a couple of screws in here for now. So I've just put two screws in. I did realise as I was screwing it together, this is just temporary because we've got a bolt to run through the middle here. It runs through there. I have got some longer bolts now. Probably won't put that in on this video um, because the whole thing will have to be disassembled to put the grease and ball bearings in. So we can do that later. Um, so that's in there now. I think we can uh, just try that out before we put the uh, front on. Um, yep, so that should be good. So we can turn our attention to the back now. Um, I did route that cable. It's difficult to see down there. Maybe there's a better way of bringing that cable out. Maybe it could have come out of the one of the square holes down there. Might have just kept things a bit more tidy. As it stands, it's kind of running in front of the servo. Don't suppose it really matters. Um, so I don't actually know where I'm going to put the circuit board. My plan is to... Where did it go? Here it is. So I was thinking that we would uh, fix it to the back here. Um, could even just put it up here. I have no idea what kind of space we've got around the back here. Um, we've got the uh, back parts of the robot to attach to the torso and I don't know kind of what space you get. This possibly is even where the uh, batteries may be positioned. So can't plan exactly what I'm going to do yet. I might make uh, temporarily a little custom bracket and we can just uh, borrow these holes here, here and here. Make a little uh, custom 3D printed bracket that will just take this circuit board for now. We can always just throw that away later if we figure out things won't fit. Um, and we'll leave, the, we'll leave all the wires just a little bit long in case we do need to move things around later. So I think the next thing to do is to start soldering up this board. I was in two mind what's I was in two minds as to what to do with the Arduino because we could uh, mount some sort of a socket for it, but I haven't really got anything suitable. So I think I'm just going to go for it and solder it straight onto the to the board. It does mean it's kind of permanent, but I can't see that I'm ever going to use this Arduino for any other purpose. Once it's installed in the robot, I'm never going to remove it. Um, I guess there's always the option of if it fails, we might need to replace it. But uh, if it comes to that, I might be able to remove it with us um, by desoldering it, um, or just throw away the whole board and rebuild another one. I can get these soldered in. I can get the headers soldered in and the uh, socket here. We've got less components now because we were going to have the resistor and capacitor down here, but I've installed them in the front. So I'll uh, start soldering this together. Here's the little circuit board I've made up. I've soldered on the uh, Arduino Nano. Put my headers on and my ribbon cable connector. There's my messy wiring on the back. It's not too bad. I 
I've also um, crimped a single inline connector onto the end of my NeoPixel cable. Um, there's a little Mm, camera's not going to show it up. Oh, I can just see it. There's a little arrow on the uh, connection on the right as we're looking at it here. Um, that's the ground. So, and I've allocated uh, the header that's uh, lined up with the O to be the NeoPixel. Uh, that happened to the. Uh, line up exactly with D3 on the Arduino, so I've elected to use pin D3 on the Arduino for the NeoPixel. Not quite sure if that's standard, but I kind of didn't have any choice because uh, it was difficult to get to those um, connections on the back. The easiest thing to do was just solder the two of them together. So I can plug that on there now. That's a fairly neat solution. Um, and our servo will plug onto uh, one of the end connections here. I'm not sure which one I'm going to choose. It doesn't really matter. I've uh, allocated one of them to be for the top stomach and one to, one to be for the mid stomach. Um, the two pins that control them are coming in via the ribbon cable. Uh, this is my uh, power connector here. I'm going to have ground in the middle. I'm going to have a slightly higher voltage on the outside for the servo, maybe six or six and a half, seven volts. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have five volts to power the NeoPixel. Okay, so I've just brought in uh, the five volt power supply in here, and these connections here. Uh, they're just there to, they don't actually go anywhere, they're just there to allow me to join these two wires together. Um, one's coming from servo on the left and the other one's coming from the servo on the right. So it's just literally giving me a, like a junction point to connect those wires together. And we'll use the other two for the similar setup on the mid stomach. Um, so I think we're just about there now for the NeoPixel. We just need a USB coming in here from our laptop and some some power on the uh, 5 volt. Small mistake there, the uh, 5 volts is going to be on the left and the higher voltage for the servo will eventually be on the right. Um, I plugged in the battery, checked the voltage was good here. I did actually check that before I connected things up so I wasn't sure I'm using this um, castle Beck and I think you can program them to give different voltages it actually says on there 4.8 volts to 9 volts out so I did just um, check before I connected it that we were actually getting 5 volts and it was exactly 5 volts so I've connected that I turned it on I then checked the uh, the voltage across the capacitor here because that should be our 5 volt supply. Initially it wasn't working and that's when I realised I'd mixed up the um, connections on this side. Uh, the 5 volt should have been here. I originally connected it there. Swapped that over, rechecked it and we do now have 5 volts across the capacitor here. So I've got my laptop out here now so we can start having some fun. Um, I don't know what my robot lab is doing here. What on earth is going on with that? Seems to be just uh, generating a whole load of errors. I'm going to just kill that off and hopefully we'll start again. So apologies for not using a screen capturing video software for this. Um, unfortunately you're going to have to put up with my shaky cam holding my mobile phone. I've just uh, started the myrobotlab.jar file. It's just opening up up here. So 
I'll go to runtime. Oh, we could just probably start up the uh, InMove services, but I'm just going to do this kind of one thing at a time. So I'm going to look for the Arduino. There. So we'll start that. I'll call that Arduino. Spell that right. Okay, and I'm also going to look for the NeoPixel. Let's have a look down here. There it is, the NeoPixel. We'll start that as well. I'll just call that Neo because I can't be bothered to type it out in full. So, what do we got up here? Let's have a look at the Arduino dot serial. Um, I need to plug it in. Okay, uh, we should have COM13 hopefully. No. Let's hit refresh. There we go, COM13. Connect. I did see, uh, you won't see it now, but I did see a quick flash over here. I'm guessing that's good. And we've got our, our green uh, light up here. So I'll now go to the NeoPixel. Um, I'll select my controller to be my Arduino. We're going to use pin 3. I haven't tried this, so this is all live. Um, number of pixels. How many pixels do we have on our NeoPixel? I think we're 16, if I can count. Let's try... Sixteen. Click attach. Okay, nothing is happening. Um, change the animation to color wipe. I have no idea what that is. And I'll start the animation. And I can tell you, complete anticlimax, absolutely nothing is happening. So I'm going to have to try and diagnose what on earth is wrong. I'm kind of nervous because I don't know if anything is going to catch fire. Nothing seems to be going up in smoke. Hmm. I'm assuming that pin D3 on here is pin 3. And we did select pin 3. It's greyed out now, but yeah, they did select pin 3. Never used this before, so I don't actually know what I'm doing here. Um, I'm guessing that... Did I actually click start animation? Nothing is going on. I don't have an oscilloscope, so I can't put a scope on the data pin to see if anything is going on. The only other thing I could try is setting these to 255. I'm guessing it's like RGB. Again, don't really know. It's funny when I clicked that, it changed back to zero. Ah, I think we actually have. Look at that. We have something. Uh, it's a little. Uh, doesn't show up very well on the camera, but I can see. Some of the lights are lit. Not all of them, though. Mm. 
Okay. Looks pretty nice, but doesn't quite look right. Let's try something else. What should we try? Um, flash random. Start animation. Well, I don't know if you call that flashing, but they are... Uh, This <laughs> does worry me a little bit whether the whole thing has just failed now. Rainbow cycle. Well, they still work. That's a that's a good sign. It's odd. I don't seem to have them all lit. For some reason, some of them are not lit. Did I count them wrong? Have we got more than sixteen there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Am I correct in saying that 12 are lit? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 are lit. And 4 are not. So we do have 16. And let me check. I did set that to 16. And it is showing me 16 pixels in my robot lab. I suppose there is a possibility that the NeoPixel is, ring is faulty. Hmm, I don't know how we're really going to tell what the problem is. Um, the last thing to do would have been to fit the the cover on here, or the you know, the little. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, I think it's actually called disc in turn, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm actually tempted to leave it off for the moment whilst I uh, play around, but that that should just uh, push in there, and we don't need to glue it in or anything. So I've, I have kind of got to where I wanted to get to. Um, we are going to have to do a bit more work on this. We're going to have to uh, effectively dismantle it and in, fit the grease and the ball bearings. What I think I'm going to do, though, I think what the plan will be um, is I'll dismantle it and as I rebuild it, I'll attach the uh, torso onto the top, which will be a bit of a challenge, I think. So... Maybe we'll cover that in a future video where we show us actually uh, attaching the torso on and we'll get the thing greased up and we can finally have the whole thing moving. But um, other than four lights don't work, we do actually have the uh, NeoPixel up and running. Okay, so I'll end the video there. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. I really am trying to build up my subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed, why haven't you subscribed? Hit that subscribe button. I need more subscribers. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.